Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Mike Werner and today we're going to be taking a look at budgeting. Specifically, we're going to prepare the production budget and the direct materials budget. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at some of the information that we're going to need. We're going to need January, February, and March's sales, of course, because we're doing the first quarter of 2021's budget. So we'll need this information. Surprisingly, we're also going to need April and May's information to do the production budget and the direct material budget. Some other information we're going to need is information about our finished goods inventory. Our budgeted beginning inventory for the quarter is 40 units and we can budget any number of units as our desired ending inventory for each month. But it's a good idea, say, when we, get, when we budget January's ending inventory to take a look at February's sales to make sure that we have enough on hand to get a good start for February's sales requirements. When we do the direct material budget, we're also going to need information about the direct material, such as how many pounds per unit, what's our desired ending inventories, and so forth. More about that later. Here's the information for the example problem we're going to be working through in this video. It's probably a good idea to take a screenshot of this page so that you can have it for reference as you watch the video. This is page one, and this is page two. This page includes a lot of the information we're going to use today, such as information about the finished goods inventory, about the direct material inventory, and about direct labor. So again, it's probably a good idea to take a screenshot of these two pages, then print them out so you'll have them available as you view the video. So now let's go ahead and get started with these budgets. So I'm going to start with, of course, the production budget. And the first thing I need to know are the needs. What do we need units for? Well, first of all, we're going to need them for our budgeted sales. And our budgeted sales are 200 units for January, 250 units for February, and 300 units for March. Next, we're also going to need units for our ending inventory. We don't want to produce just enough units to sell in January, for example, and have none left over at the end of the month to get a good start on February sales. But instead, we need an adequate ending inventory in January to get a good start on February. We can select just about any number. We could say we want 50 units as an ending inventory each and every month. But what some companies will do is look at the next period periods sales and scale their ending inventory based on those sales. So if they're going to sell more units next month, they'll want a bigger ending inventory. In our case, the company has decided to maintain an ending inventory of finished goods of 20% of next month's sales. So we're going to need units for our budgeted ending inventory. Maybe I should say FG for finished goods inventory. And so 20% of February sales of 250 is 50 units. 50 units. So we're going to need those 50 units. This is 20% of February sales. And when we combine these two, it's going to give us our total needs. And we're going to need 250 units. And then, you know, so we said, okay, we're going to need 250 units. Should we manufacture 250 units? Possibly. But instead, it might be a good idea to see how many units we have on hand at the beginning of the month. And it says for finished goods here, it says we have a beginning inventory of 40 units. We don't have to make all 250 units because we're going to have 40 units at the beginning of January. So I'm going to say here, less the beginning inventory, less the beginning finished goods inventory, which is 40 units, 40 units. I'm going to subtract that. And notice that our budgeted beginning inventory is 20% of January sales. So we subtract and we arrive at budgeted production, budgeted production of 200 and 10 units. So there we go. Beautiful. So we already did the first month. So now let's move on to February. You could calculate February and March if you like. Just pause the video and give it a try. But let's go ahead and do it now. Uh, 
for February, we've got our, our budgeted sales of 250 units. Our ending inventory is gonna be 20% of March's sales, so that's 60 units. 20% of March's sales, that's the 60 units. We add these two amounts together, we get 310 units as our total needs. Our beginning inventory that we're gonna subtract is not the 40 units from uh, the beginning inventory for January, but rather January's ending inventory becomes February's beginning inventory. So we're gonna move the 50 units down here. Here we go. That's good. And we subtract that amount to get budgeted production of 260 units. For March, we start with our budgeted sales. We add in our desired ending inventory, which oop, I guess we're going to need April's uh, sales of 320 units to uh, find our desired ending inventory for March. So 20% of April sales is 64 units. We combine these to arrive at 364 units, which is our total needs. Then we subtract our beginning inventory of 60 units. Here it is. So go ahead and subtract that to arrive at budgeted production of 304 units. So there you have it, the production budget. The next thing we need to do is the direct material purchases budget. So let's do the direct material budget to see how many pounds of direct material we're gonna need to purchase. Okay, so now we're gonna do the direct materials purchases budget. I've gone ahead and headed up the statement. It's, it's right below the uh, production budget. We've got January, February, March, the total, and we're also going to need information for April, and we're going to begin with our needs. What do we need direct material for? Well, first of all, we need the direct material for production. So, for budgeted production. And we've already done this budget, so we just move those budgeted production amounts into place, take them off the production budget, and enter them on the direct material purchases budget. So January is 210, February is 260, March is 304. All budgeted production amounts. So now that we know how many units we're gonna produce, how much direct material will we need to produce those units? Let's see, over here it says 100 pounds of direct material per finished unit. So we're gonna multiply this by the direct material required, which is 100 pounds for each unit. So multiplying, we've got uh, 210 times 100 is direct material required for production. For January, we're going to need 21,000 pounds. For February, we're going to need 26,000 pounds. And for March, just multiplying, we're going to need 30,400 pounds of material. So we're multiplying each one of these. Let me just show that. And that will provide the direct material required for production. Now the next thing that we need to know is how much material will we need for our ending direct material inventory? We don't want to purchase just enough material to satisfy our production requirements and then begin the next month with no direct material on hand. So we've got to buy enough material to provide a sufficient ending inventory each month. So our budgeted ending inventory, let's assume that our budgeted ending inventory is 10% of the direct material requirements for the next period. So that would mean we need 2,600 pounds of direct material. That would be 10% of the material required for February's production, 2,600 units. And so we're going to add these two amounts together and that will provide us with the direct material needed, the budgeted direct material needed. 
budgeted direct material needed is in this case 23,600 23,600 pounds and and we'll, we'll do the next column over in just a couple of minutes but let's continue with this um, once we figure out how much material we're gonna need do we go out and buy the material well not necessarily First, we look to see if we have any on hand. We look at our beginning inventory for January of the direct material. And what we find in this case is we have a beginning direct material inventory of 2,100 pounds. Let me just make a note of that. Direct material inventory, beginning inventory, 2,100 pounds. Okay, sort of adding that to the table of info. So we're gonna subtract, I'm gonna say less, beginning, direct material inventory quite a bit of abbreviating going on here so that I can keep the letters a little bigger and uh, that would be 2,100 pounds and we're going to subtract that to arrive at our budgeted direct material purchases in pounds and that amount would be 21,500 21,500 pounds now this direct material cost dollars per pound so now let's determine the budgeted cost of these direct material purchases so we're going to uh, multiply by the budgeted cost per pound which is two dollars and when we multiply we get our budgeted direct material purchases in dollars of forty three thousand dollars so there we go We've got the budgeted production times the required direct material per unit of production. Gives us the direct material required for production. We're going to add to that our budgeted ending direct material inventory to arrive at our budgeted direct material needs. We'll subtract our beginning direct material inventory to arrive at the pounds of direct material we need to purchase. Multiply by the $2 per pound will give us the budgeted purchases of direct material in dollars. And now we can complete these other columns. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and do that, it's probably a good idea for you to interact with this material and, and that way you'll remember it a little bit better. So here we go. Let's see. We've got um, the ending inventory for February is going to be 10% of March's uh, drag material. So 10% would be 3,040. And then for, uh, oh boy, for this one, for this one. Mm. Ah, I, I don't have the number. I'm going to go ahead. I, I, I've got to go ahead and complete April's numbers all the way down to this point. So what I've got to do is go ahead and, and, and do their, their production, the production budget for April. So we've got, got budgeted sales for May of 330 units. So that means we're going to need, um, let's see, April will be our April sales plus our budgeted ending inventory would be 66 units. That would give us a total of 386. And then we're going to subtract our budgeted beginning inventory, which is from here. That's the 64 units, 64 units. And uh, so we subtract to, to arrive at the budgeted uh, production for April, which is 322 units, 322 units. And then for the direct material, we're going to take that 322 units of budget of production times the 100 pounds per unit to arrive at 32,200 pounds required for production for April. Once we have that amount, we can go ahead and multiply it by the 10% to get our budgeted ending inventory for March, which is 3,220 pounds of material, which would be 10%, I'll just show this temporarily, 10% of the direct material required for production for April. I'm just gonna show this temporarily because in a moment, in a moment, I'll be filling in the total columns here and I'll erase that arrow in order to do it. So let's go back over here. 
uh, to February, we're going to add the 26,000 and the 3,040 to arrive at 29,040 pounds of material. Then what we're going to do is subtract our beginning inventory. And remember, the beginning inventory for February is January's ending inventory of 2,600. And so we'll be subtracting to arrive at the direct material purchases in pounds, which is 26,440. And then we're going to multiply that by the $2 per pound to arrive at the cost of the direct material purchases, which is 52880 So there we go. Now let's go ahead and complete uh, March, 30400 plus the budgeted ending direct material inventory, which is 10% of April's direct material requirements. And so we add these together and we get, what is this, 33620, 33620. And then we subtract our budgeted beginning inventory of 3,040 units, which we get from February. Subtract that to arrive at 30,580, which is the budgeted direct material purchases in pounds. We then multiply by the $2 per pound to arrive at the budgeted purchases in dollars, which is 61,160. Way down here at the bottom of the board. Oh my God, I hope you can see it okay. So we've pretty much done everything, and now we're gonna go ahead and, and complete this column for the totals. Let me erase the arrow that I temporarily drew here. And let's go ahead and complete the total column for these two budgets. For the production budget, I'm going to go ahead and add this budgeted sales across. So let me indicate that I'm adding this across. And that gives me a total budgeted sales of 750 units. And then our budgeted ending inventory, you might be tempted to add this row across, the budgeted ending inventory amounts, to add the 50, the 60, and the 64. But that would be a lot like just adding a, say, a price per unit, like this cost per unit, adding it across to get $6 per unit. It's just not appropriate. So instead, to get our budgeted ending inventory, we look at this whole situation. This is our whole budget period. And the ending inventory, let's go to the end, which is March. That that's the end. And so what we're going to do is take March's ending inventory of 64 and add that in. And when we do, we get a total budgeted needs of 814. And then for the beginning inventory, we again look at the whole period and say, okay, instead of going to the end, let's go to the beginning. And at the beginning of the period, the inventory was 40. The beginning inventory is 40 for the whole period. So we're going to subtract out the 40 to arrive at a budgeted production of 774. So that's 774 units. Now you can add the top row across and you can also check your numbers by adding the budgeted production row across, that's fine, but you can't add this total needs row across because of the way the inventories are working. You know, sometimes you're using other inventory amounts. So there you go. There's our total column for the production budget. Now let's do the total column for the direct material budget. We add the budgeted production row across to get 774 uh, times the 100 pounds per unit would give us a total of 77,400 pounds required for production. Our ending inventory would be the ending inventory for the entire period. And so it's the ending inventory. So we go to the end of the period, which is 3,220. We add those amounts to arrive at the 80,620 which is our budgeted direct material needs. We then subtract the beginning inventory for the whole period. Now here's the whole period again, January, February, March. The beginning of the period had a beginning inventory of 2,100 pounds. So we're gonna subtract that, 2,100 pounds. Subtracting the 2,100 pounds from 80,620, we arrive at budgeted direct material purchases in pounds of 78, 520. 
We multiply this by the $2 per pound. We arrive at budgeted purchases in dollars for the entire quarter of $157,040. So in this video, we did the production budget, we did the direct material budget, and now we're gonna do one more budget, a very simple budget, the direct labor budget. So let's go ahead and look at that one next. Okay, I've gone ahead and erased the whiteboard, and all I've got here are some, some date headings. We're gonna be doing the direct labor budget. And to do the direct labor budget, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need January, February, and March's uh, sales. We're not really going to need April and May for this because with labor, you don't have any beginning or ending inventory. So the budget is a lot easier to prepare. We're also going to need some direct labor information like the number of direct labor hours per unit. Ten, it takes ten direct labor hours to make each unit. And then we'll also need the cost per direct labor hour and our workers get paid $15 per direct labor hour. So we're going to go ahead and start with our budgeted production. Our budgeted production. which you'll recall from our production budget is 210 units for January. It's 260 units for February. For March, it's 304 units. The next thing we're gonna do is multiply the number of units times the direct labor hours required to produce each unit. So the direct labor hours per unit The direct labor hours per unit is 10, 10 direct labor hours per unit of production. So we're going to be multiplying each one of our amounts by this 10 hours. And we're going to arrive at our budgeted direct labor hours. Budgeted, and I'm just going to say DL hours. Budgeted direct labor hours, which is 2100, 2600, and 3040. Next, we're going to multiply the budgeted direct labor hours by the budgeted labor rate of $15 per hour. And when we do, we get budgeted direct labor cost of $31,500 for January, and that is budgeted direct labor cost of $31,500 for January, $39,000 for February, $45,600 for March. So there you've got it. You've got the uh, direct labor budget month by month. How much the direct labor cost is budgeted to be for each of these months. It might be a good idea to determine the total amount for the whole quarter. So we can add some of these rows across. We're going to add the number of units produced across, and we get the 774. 774 units is our budget of production, and it takes 10 hours per unit, 10 hours per unit. So multiplying, we get 7,740 direct labor hours. Multiply that by the direct labor rate of $15 per hour, and we arrive at 116,000 $100. And we can also check this number by adding across, make sure we got it right, add this one across, and we can also add the total budgeted direct labor hours across as well. So there you go, you've got January, February, March, and the total. So in this video we've done the production budget, it was pretty involved. A little more difficult than this. I mean, basically, this is the same thing, except there are no beginning and ending inventories. You've got to let your workers go home. So we've got the production budget that we did. 
That was pretty involved. We've got the direct material purchases budget, which was somewhat involved, uh, maybe even more involved than the production budget, because first we had to determine how much direct material we needed for every unit we budgeted to produce. So we had to do that extra step. And then we also had to factor in the beginning and ending inventories month by month. And then finally, at the end, we got the number of pounds of direct material, but to get that amount in dollars, we had to multiply by the budgeted cost per pound. So that was pretty involved. Then we moved on to this budget, the direct labor budget. Took just a few minutes. So we've done three very important budgets in the budgeting process. It's, they're all part of the operating budget, sometimes called the master budget. So this sort of brings our video to an end. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. And if you found this video helpful or informative, please give it a thumbs up. So this is Mike Warner from Miami saying bye for now, and we'll see you in the next video.